when viewing this tape, it is important to realize that there are some differences between utilities with respect to safety practices and procedures. Be sure that you are aware of the specific requirements of your company and ensure that these requirements are observed at all times. This is a live line procedure. Let us first look at the job diagrammatically. The objective of this task is to replace a defective dead end insulator. First, insulating covers are placed over the neutral and also the guy wires. Now a cover is placed on the lower conductor. A cover is also placed over the dead end insulator. The lineman can now climb the pole and work on the second conductor. A come along is installed on the second conductor and a sling installed on the pole. Then a set of rope blocks is attached between the come along and the sling. Tension is taken off the dead end insulator by tightening the rope blocks. The cotter key and clevis pin are removed from both ends of the dead end insulator. This then is removed and lowered to ground. In its place, a new dead end insulator is installed. The rope blocks, come along, and sling can now be removed from the pole. The linemen move down the pole, covers are removed, and the job is complete. Before we look at the field demonstration, let's review the appropriate safety features that must be observed. Clean and check all equipment before commencing the job. Obtain a hold off on the line. Check rubber gloves and glove covers. Hold a conference before the work starts. Check the pole to be worked on and adjacent poles. Check the line voltage. Always maintain a safe limit of approach. Work on only one conductor at a time. Use safety covers as required. Work as a team. Communicate. Keep conductors under control. The principal tools and equipment required for this task are a jumper holding stick, tie sticks, grip all clamp sticks, cotter key puller and clevis pin puller, voltage indicator, and a ball socket adjuster to hold the dead end insulator. Okay, let's now look at a demonstration of this procedure carried out in the field. Here are the dead end insulators. The bottom line is the neutral, and the top three are obviously the live conductors. In this particular sequence, the linemen are going to wear rubber gloves when they are using the hot sticks. This practice is preferred by some utilities when working in close proximity to live conductors. In contrast, some other utilities will not allow rubber gloves to be worn when working with hot sticks. Check your company's specific requirements. After putting on rubber gloves and rubber glove protectors, the linemen hold a tailboard conference. This ensures that appropriate safety procedures will be followed and that everyone knows the specific procedures involved and their role in it. Right. The linemen climb the pole carrying hand lines with them. The hand line is attached to the neutral support. The voltage indicator is raised to the linemen. They check line voltage, which ensures safety precautions are taken appropriate to that voltage level. The voltage indicator is also checked to make sure that it is in working order. Two line covers are now raised. And these are placed on the neutral. Two pole covers are raised, and these are placed over the neutral and bracket. Additional line covers are raised, 
These are installed on the guy wires on the back and side of the pole. Clamps are secured on the guy wires to hold the covers in place. The guy wires and the neutral are covered because these are a second point of possible contact. In addition to their insulating value, the covers remind the lineman to stay clear of the neutral and guy wires. A hot stick with a line cover attached is raised, also a short pole cover. The line cover is installed on the lower conductor and the pole cover is installed over the dead end insulator. You can see that one lineman is using a grip all stick while the other lineman is using a tie stick. With the lower conductor insulated, one lineman now climbs up the back of the pole so that he can be in a position to work on the second conductor using hot sticks. Again, notice that the guy wires and neutral have been covered and the lineman is wearing rubber gloves. A nylon sling is attached to the pole below the middle conductor. A come along is raised and installed on the middle conductor while a rope snubbing bracket is attached to the base of the pole by the ground man. A pulley is raised and installed behind the pole. This will be used for the rope block hand line. The rope block is now raised. One end is attached to the sling on the pole using a grip all. The other end of the rope block is attached to the come along. You can now observe that the pulley allows the ground man to operate the rope block hand line. A jumper holding stick is placed on the conductor quite close to the conductor dead end clamp. This is so that the free end of the conductor can be controlled once the dead end insulator is released. The rope block is tightened so as to take up the mechanical strain of the conductor and so release tension from the dead end. The dead end insulator is now ready to be removed. The top lineman uses a cotter key removing tool to take the cotter key out. A clevis pin tool is put over the pin and it is pulled out toward the center of the running corner. The insulator is held in place by the other lineman using a ball socket adjuster. The second cotter key and clevis pin are then taken out of the dead end insulator. The insulator is now lowered to the ground. The replacement insulator is attached to the hand line and raised to the lineman. Then the clevis pin and cotter key are installed on the pole end of the dead end insulator. A ball socket adjuster is fitted around the insulator to hold it in position while the clevis pin and cotter key are being inserted. The jumper holding stick is removed from the conductor. The rope block is slackened off so that it can be disconnected from the sling and come along.
The rope block is lowered to ground, also the pulley in the hand line of the rope block. The come along is then removed using a grip all clamp stick. The sling can now be removed from the pole and lowered to ground. The upper lineman comes part way down the pole and you can now observe the lineman removing the cover up material. They start by removing the cover up material from the lower line conductor. Finally, the cover up material is removed from the neutral and also the guys. And this is then lowered to ground. Keep in mind that the linemen are working with hot sticks and they are also wearing rubber gloves. This gives them added protection when working near energized components. The linemen descend the pole and the job is complete. Here's a view of the finished job. Okay, let's now review the procedures step by step. After checking line voltage, we must install covers on the neutral and also the guy wires to guard against a second point of contact. Install covers on the lower line conductor, including the dead end insulator. Install a sling on the pole. Install a come along on the conductor at the location where the dead end is to be removed. Install a rope block with a pulley in the hand line between the sling and the come along. Tighten the rope block so as to take up the strain and remove tension from the dead end insulator. Remove the cotter key and pin from both ends of the insulator and lower it to ground. Install a new dead end insulator. Remove the rope block, the sling, and also the come along. The top lineman moves part way down the pole and removes the covers. The job is now complete. The safety procedures followed are the various pieces of equipment, tools, and protective equipment to be used are all set out. All tools and equipment are cleaned and checked before the job begins. Hotline tools are never placed on the bare ground. A hold off is obtained on the line to ensure that the line will be locked out after an automatic protection operation. The linemen give their rubber gloves and rubber glove protectors a thorough inspection for wear, cuts, or contamination on both outside and inside surfaces. Rings, wrist watches, and identification bracelets are not to be worn inside rubber gloves. Some utilities require safety glasses to be worn also. A conference is held before the work starts to ensure that all procedures are understood by all the workmen, that proper safety precautions will be observed, that all personnel know specifically what they have to do, and finally, that any special hazards present are taken into account. The pole to be worked on and its adjacent poles are checked to ensure that they are safe. For example, rot, loose ties, etc. The voltage of the line is checked so that the correct safety precautions can be taken in accordance with that particular voltage. The voltage indicator is checked before and after use to be sure that it is in working order. The linemen work so that all unprotected parts of their bodies maintain the approved safe limit of approach for that particular voltage. The linemen work only on one conductor at a time. Safety covers are put on the guy wires and the neutral near the linemen to protect them against a second point of possible contact. Safety covers are also put on the lower live conductor, which is close to the linemen. During the work, the workmen inform each other of every move. They work as a team. 
conductors are to be kept under control at all times. Okay, so this completes our demonstration on how to replace a dead-end insulator using hot sticks.